I, I don't even know where to begin with the game. They absolutely fucked it. You, 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 you've ruined it. You, how do you screw up a 20-year-old game re-release? How, how do you do it? This is going to be a bit of a rant, really, because I'm fed up with Star Wars games releasing in shocking, shocking fashion. More specifically, um, Battlefront games. So, if you've been living under a rock recently, about a month ago, or a couple of months back, surprising announcement in the Nintendo Switch um, Direct thing. They were going to re-release Star Wars Battlefront 2 on modern consoles and on PC with better... You know, better graphic. Well, not better graphics, but upscaled graphics to look a bit better. Um, sixty frames and all that. Now, from what I've played of the single player, anyway, um, my single player's been running fine. Um, Rise of the Empire, all the cutscenes work fine. There are reports though that people are missing the cutscenes, the cool cutscenes with the clone trooper going, the beginning of the war, finally the first, blah blah blah. I've had nothing good, a good time with the single player. Instant action works. Glad the Conquest works fine, and Rise of the Empire works fine. So in my experience, I don't have any problem with that. What I have is a problem <laughs> with the multiplayer, and it ain't good. And most of the problems are with Battlefront Two online. Battlefront One runs better, not 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 perfect, but better. So where do we begin with this? Well, first of all, lag is shocking, right? The lag is absolutely abysmal getting in a game really really difficult can be hit and miss sometimes your game will just completely crash um the netcode locks your game at 30 frames the multiplayer is locked at 30 fucking frames in a game in 2023 on newer consoles and pc doesn't matter what you play on 30 fucking frames online why and not only that, but when the game launched, there was three servers! Three servers! And on Steam, there was apparently 10,000 people trying to get on with the servers with a max population cap of 64! You'd be lucky if that's, what, 300 people? Out of 10,000? And that was across the board on PC and probably Xbox and PS5 and switch but we're not done yet because i have found out no one's talking about this but i have found out today me and my canadian friend chase were trying to join a game we're trying to join a dedicated server chase could not see our dedicated server that me and my friend connor's could join so then we tried to host the game my friend connor by the way, lives in Scotland as well. Um, he's called Boycon. I'll put a link in the description for Connor. We tried to find a game. I could join Connor. Connor could join me when we set up a public session. But could Chase? No, because it turns out the game is fucking region locked. You cannot join anyone outside your region. So if you're in America, you're stuck on the North American servers. If you live in Europe, you're in the EU servers. And if you live anywhere else... I don't know, the Asian servers, maybe, if you live in Russia and India and China and Japan and all that, you're probably in the Asian servers, so you can't play with anyone outside Asia. You're fucking region locked online, and if no one's playing in your region, you cannot play, so you then have to use a fucking VPN to play with anyone outside your fucking region. Now, these problems, most of them do not persist on Battlefront 1. Battlefront 1, you can play mostly fine. You still can't play with your friends outside um, your region, uh, the lag isn't anywhere near as bad, it's still stuck at 30, but overall, it's pretty playable. The reinforcement cap could do with a little bit of a bump, but another thing that Battlefront 2 has, and most of these problems are on Battlefront 2, not 1, is when you join a dedicated server game, the reinforcement count back in the day, I believe, was at 250, right? Now, I played on PS2 back in the day, I didn't have online, so it was just me and playing against the AI. So, that would take about 10 or 15 minutes to beat a normal conquest mode. Now, if you've only got a reinforcement population ticket of 100, and there's 64 of you in, then you may get 2 or 3 kills each, and then the game is over like that. Which basically means you might be in for a game for 2 or 3 minutes, and then the next game starts. It's a fucking joke, man. 
it's a bloody cash grab for minimum effort, maximum profit. And do you know what? I was on the hype train. I had pre-ordered it on Xbox and I also bought it on Steam because I didn't think that was going to be in the mess it was. Um, I've requested a refund on Steam. Um, I've got the email back from Steam. I'm hoping I get it because I'm probably not the only one that's refunded it. Aspire have put out a statement saying they're going to fix the net code and they're going to try and get the game it's multiplayer more stable. But Aspire, you know that it's not just the multiplayer that's the problem. You know that your game is fundamentally flawed. You can get the original games on PC that run far better than the game you just released two days ago. And if I wanted to play the game for an offline experience that works quite well for me, I wouldn't have bought your crappy remaster or re-release, whatever it is. I would have just bought the Xbox versions. And I bought the original versions on Steam anyway. So... I guess I'll just go back and play them. Get them on PC. If you have a PC, I would recommend buying the originals on there. Support the originals, right? Because let's be honest, Aspire aren't going to fix this. They may make the online a bit more stable, but they're not going to fix the absolutely fundamental problems that Battlefront Collection has. <laughs> and these problems are pretty bad. The game is broken. The AI doesn't work a lot of times as well. I remember playing a space battle in multiplayer and the bots would just stand in the hangar and just do nothing. There's also a respawn glitch as well where you get stuck on Hero Assault if you're the villains and you, you the respawn timer gets stuck at one and you can't respawn. Does that happen in the games that came out 20 years ago? No. Oh, why just... And it's not just Battlefront that's the problem. I've heard the Dark... Was it the Dark Forces remaster? Can't remember the name of it, but that that's also a bit crap I've heard. I never played that game, so I don't plan on getting it. But um, Star Wars fans with games recently have been shafted for far too fucking long. Jedi Survivor, although I didn't have any problems with the frame rate, was fine for myself. I know people that played it, and I know people who on PC anyway. Um, the console version I heard was a little bit better, more stable. But I heard people on PC when it came out at launch, the game was dropping frames, freezing, crashing like crazy. Now, that game was actually good, and it didn't require online, it didn't have half the problems that Battlefront Collection has, but but we Star Wars fans need to stop getting shafted when it comes to games, man. Like, it's absolutely mind-boggling that you can't even release games that came out 20, and even with Dark Forces 3 or whatever that game, I can't remember the name of it. Um, that game came out, what, 28 years ago, some of that game's about a year or two younger than me, and it can't even get a decent remaster, um, and what, what other Star Wars games have Aspire re-released, oh yeah, Aspire, yeah, they were the ones that did the KOTOR release on Switch, and said that the restored content mod was going to come out for it, and then they said it wasn't, and rather than giving people some of the money back, they were like, oh, just get another Star Wars game on Switch. I believe they said The Force Unleashed was one you could choose from. So they false advertised and said that it would come out later and then it didn't come out and then they said, oh, just get another Star Wars game on us. Fuck off. Someone someone with money needs to give these guys a class action lawsuit because it's not it's not going to be the last time they do this. They're going to do it again. They're going to re re-release another Star Wars game that's beloved, watch them do it with Republic Commando, <laughs> um, and they'll put the online back for that, and then it'll be broken, I mean, I don't know anyone that played Republic Commando online when it came out back in the day, but watch them do it with Republic Commando, or Empire at War, watch them re-release Empire at War, and then at that be fundamentally fucking broken, because they're going to do it again, for some reason these guys have been given the, the golden goose of the Star Wars IPs from the 2000s and 90s, and they keep botching it. I mean, the pod racing remaster wasn't very good either. I've got that on Xbox, and yeah. And now you have cancelled the the Mandalorian game that Respawn were gonna make, and Disney have given Epic a zero percent license fee on the Star Wars license. Uh, so basically, the only way you're gonna get games is through Fortnite for Star Wars, and they've increased the license fee on all other developers by. It went from twenty to thirty percent. If any AAA developer 
wants the licensed off to pay 30% of the profits to Disney, then obviously they've got to pay themselves and got to pay the developers. So they're giving other third party publishers and developers less incentive to want the Star Wars license because more of their money has to go to the publisher. And I've heard the license is quite expensive for that anyway. So it ain't looking good for uh, non epic devs if they want to make Star Wars games. And Star Wars fans can't even get decent re-releases, remasters, you name it. Because they're going to release broken. So, my opinion on the Battlefront collection should never have happened. It was such an easy win. But it was clearly a cash grab for minimum effort for maximum profit. And stupid bastards like me bought the game twice. <laughs> my recommendation, do not buy this. If you have a PC, get the original 2. Get Battlefront 1 and 2, the originals from 2004 and 5. Buy them. Their online works, the graphics are a little bit blurry and the resolution isn't as good, but plays well enough. It's a 50 FPS cap, but I'm sure there's a mod somewhere that you can, you know, get rid of the cap and play it at a thousand odd frames. So yeah, get, get the original games on PC. If you don't have a PC, you can still buy Battlefront 1 and 2 on the Microsoft Store on Xbox. I believe you can also get it on PlayStation Store on PS4 and 5. Uh... I think uh, I don't even know if there is if they are out on PlayStation because I never I never had a PS4. Uh, oh, and if you don't have them digitally, I'm sure you can buy them secondhand on Amazon or eBay or go out to your local your local uh, <clears throat> pawn shop um, or secondhand or your local game retail shop, and you can probably get a secondhand physical copy for quite cheap on Xbox. Uh, or just buy a secondhand copy and plug in your old PlayStation. Simple as that. But, yeah. Minimum effort, maximum profit. 